You're a good looking bunch of people. Even though you look a little sleepy. I hope I won't add to that any. The testimony that I would like to share with you this afternoon is a conviction that God has placed upon the heart of Tammy, my wife, and I. And that's the importance of raising a godly heritage. There are many things said about the family these days. Some good and not, some not so good. But from the time of creation, Satan has desired to destroy godly seed. From the time of Adam and Eve to the time of Jesus' birth, as well as to the time of his death, he has wanted to kill the very seed that brings life to you and to me. Nonetheless, he also des desires to destroy godly seed everywhere. I've seen it in one family after another. I've seen it in our own, in our own families. If he can get a family to take their eyes off of Christ and put it on themselves, he can divide the family and tear down the strongholds of the church. You know, the Bible tells us, in, in, or Paul tells us about uh, elder qualifications in Timothy and, and in Titus. And, and one of the important features about strong leadership is a man that can rule his children well. So what is our response, spiritual responsibility to our children as fathers and as parents? Number one, we are to teach them diligently. Deuteronomy 6 says, starting with verse 1, Now these are the commandments, the statutes, and the judgments which the Lord your God commanded to teach you, that ye may do them in the land whether ye go to possess it, that thou might fear the Lord thy God, to keep all his statutes and his commandments, which I command thee, thou and thy sons and thy sons' sons, all the days of thy life, and that thy days may be prolonged. Hear therefore, O Israel, and observe to do it, that it may be well with thee, and that ye may increase mightily, as the Lord God of thy fathers hath promised thee in the land that floweth with milk and honey. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one God, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy might. It goes on in verse 6 and it says, And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart, and thou shalt Teach them diligently unto thy children, and shall talk of them when thou sittest in the house, and when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. What are we going to teach our children? That we are to love God with all thine heart. That we are to love God with all thy soul. And then we are to love God with all thy might. We're also to teach him the commandments, the statutes, and the judgments of the Lord. How often are we to teach him? When they're up, and when they're down, and when you're walking, and when you're in the house. To me, that's just about all the time. We are to impress, impress upon our children that the things that God feels are important are the very things we should feel are important. Amen. Secondly, our time with our children is for training. The scripture says in a very uh, familiar verse, 
In Proverbs 22, it says, train up a child in the way he should go, or the way that he is bent, and when he's old, he shall not depart from it. Now, the meaning for train up a child is from the idea of laying down a track or a path for a guided object to travel on with the concept that it has a well planned out course. Too many Christian parents think that training up their children is more like a car on a road, that, they can, that it can go wherever it wills. They take their children to church and to Sunday school or send them to summer camp and they think they've done their job as Christian parents. Then years down the road when the children take the choice of a worldly path, they throw up their hands in wonder and say, what could have gone wrong? Our responsibility as parents is to train our children in the word until Christ is formed in them. Even Paul experienced that very thing when, when, in the, when he spoke to the Galatians. When he said in Galatians chapter 4 verse 19, he says, My little children, of whom I travail in birth again until Christ be formed in you. If Paul, who considers the Galatians as his spiritual children, will travail until Christ is formed in them, why shouldn't we, who have birth or adopted children, spend the time to do the very same thing? We have a God who, speaking, of, speaking as a man, is in the business of, of turning hearts. Malachi tells us, but unto you that fear my name shall the son of righteousness arise with healing in your wings, in his wings. It goes on to say, behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet, and he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children, and the heart of the children to their fathers lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. I know and understand that in Matthew 10, in verse 35, it says, For I am come to set a man in variance against his father, and the daughter against her mother, and, in, and the daughter-in-law against a mother-in-law. This is not God's heart nor his desire. This is just the truth of the matter. When Christ comes in the hearts of some family members and not in others, it does set them against one another. Even those of you who are in Christian families where you are receiving a more clear and higher teaching have struggles with those in your own personal family who don't have the same vision that you do. This is not the heart of God, but a grim reality. God's heart is in two verses before that. In Matthew 10, 31 and 32, it says, Fear ye not, therefore, ye are of more value than many sparrows. Yes. Whosoever, therefore, shall confess me before men, him will I confess also before my Father, which is in heaven. Thirdly, our time with our children is to be a declaration of the great things that God has done. Yes. Amen. A great example is in Joshua chapter 4. Verses, uh, starting with verse 1, it says, And it came to pass when all the people were uh, clean passed over Jordan, that the Lord spake unto Joshua, saying, Take you twelve men out of the people, out of the tri out of every tribe a man, and command ye them, saying, Take you hence out of the midst of Jordan, out of the place where the priest's feet stood firm, twelve stones. And ye shall carry them over with you, and leave them in the lodging place, where ye shall lodge this night. Then Joshua called the twelve men 
whom he had prepared of the children of Israel, out of every tribe a man. And Joshua said unto them, Pass over before the ark of the Lord your God into the midst of the Jordan, and take ye up every man of you a stone upon his shoulder. Not a stone that fits between your fingers. Not a stone that you can place in your hand. Not a stone that you can even put underneath your arm. But a stone so big that you would have to lift it up and it takes your shoulders to hold it. I want 12 of those stones. According unto the number of the tribe of the children of Israel, that this may be a sign among you that when your children ask their father in the time to come, saying, What mean ye these stones? Then ye shall answer them. Amen. Well, son, those are, our, those are stones that at one time in our life, God parted this Jordan River, and we walked on dry ground. And these stones came from the middle of that river. No one else could have got those but us. And there was a time when we wandered for 40 years until an unbelieving generation had passed and just a few remnant believed. And now we passed over. And a time before that, son, we were a people in bondage, but God delivered us. Important times. At times that we need to be sharing great things that God has done with our children. Fourth, our time with our children is to be life-saving. Hebrews 11.7 says, By faith Noah, being warned of God of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his household. Amen. The question I have for us, what ark have you built or are building in Christ to save your family from destruction? Satan is in the business of destroying. He, he goes around like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. God is in the business of restoring. He wants to build a godly heritage in your family and in mine. 